Broadcasting from the Keep Moving Forward Creator Studios, it's time for the Athletes of the Titan Games podcast. This limited release show features the stories of the 2019 contestants of Dwayne The Rock Johnson's athletic competition, NBC's The Titan Games. Now here's your host, Katie Galley. Hi everyone, and welcome to the Athletes of the Titan Games podcast. I'm your host, Katie Galley. In the Keep Moving Forward Creator Studio with me today, I have Titan Games athlete, attorney, professional MMA fighter, and personal trainer with Ultimate Performance, Derek Scott. How are you doing, Derek? Hey, Katie. I'm doing quite well. Um, How about yourself? I am doing great, too. Thanks so much for stopping by and uh, sharing your story with us today. Yeah, always happy to chat. Awesome. Well, to uh, kick us off, I just wonder, where did you grow up, and how, if at all, was your childhood shaped by athletics? Yeah, so I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri, um, and I was fortunate enough to have two parents that owned a gymnastics gym, Scott's Gymnastics. So my upbringing was basically uh, born and raised in a gymnastics gym. I could do a backflip from the time I was like four years old. Um, And then very fortunate for me, um, I'm one of four brothers, two still on earth and one in heaven. And uh, that environment and those people kind of just really pushed me into not only exploring what I could do from like a physical standpoint, but also kind of just always challenging and competing. Yeah. And so when, I mean, being raised in that, in that environment as a gymnast, that's such a good, um, I think gymnastics is such a great sport to start when you're younger. Um, it just creates a good basis for no matter what path you decide to go down and creates a good basis as far as discipline, physical and mental, and also just the skills, the skills that you learn, um, while you're, while you're in it. So then did you start to become a competitive gymnast or was it just something that you grew up around? Yeah, so I competed from a very early age. I probably won my first national championship. Uh, My mom said the other day I was like five years old, but I don't know. It was like five to seven years old, so I was quite young um, by the time I won my first national championship. Um, And from that point forward, I was always competing in something, whether it be gymnastics, diving, basketball, baseball, football, you name it, I was probably playing that sport. Wow. So, I mean, from that from that early age, that's awesome to have won a championship at uh, at such a young age. So you said you, you don't really remember that, though? Um, but No, I mean, I definitely remember it, but yeah. I just don't remember how old I was. Gotcha. You know, that, that, that first time you're on the podium, it all kind of strings together when you're competing. I mean, I was probably competing ooh, once a month. I don't know. It, it seems like we were always competing in something. And if it wasn't gymnastics, it was baseball or wrestling or, you know, there was something – There was always something that I was competing in. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it wasn't just gymnastics, but it led you down a path to play um, all these different kinds of sports that kind of shaped your childhood. Yeah, exactly. So from that time on then, did you have ever, um, I mean, being surrounded by sports so much, did you have aspirations to go and compete at the collegiate level or compete at the professional level from that time you were, you were small? Yeah, from the time I was a kid, people would always ask me, like, you know, when are you going to go to the Olympics? Are you going to go to the Olympics? Um, And my father had already coached Olympic athletes, and my great-grandfather had actually competed for a chance to be on the Olympic team and then basically had a pretty crazy story where he got knocked out in, like, the the finals and there was maybe some underhanded stuff going on there. But it was always always a question – but for me, I kind of wanted to, to lead a balanced life. Um, and when you have uh, Olympic aspirations, it has to become the entirety of your life. So I didn't make that trade off to go 100% Olympic athlete. Um, but I, I knew that it would take me places and it gave me a great foundation to go forwards. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So having I mean, having that kind of run in your family and seeing that with your grandfather and then, you know, looking forward to um, just having your whole childhood then shaped by athletics and um, really helping you propel down this path. So how did it ultimately lead you to, you know, what you do today as a personal trainer, as an attorney, professional MMA fighter? How did you ultimately end up on that path? Um, that is a very uh, kind of roundabout and convoluted story. <laughs> uh, but but training and health has kind of always been part of my life. So when I was in law school, I had friends who got – um, who started studying under Charles Poliquin and their results just in the gym were, were better than mine. So from a selfish standpoint, I, I went out and I sought out some educational like, um, uh, opportunities where I was starting to learn these things for myself. 
then I started getting better results. And from that point forward, even in law school, people would be like, hey, you know, can I come train with you? You you look better than I do. You, you perform better than I do. And I was like, you know, sure, obviously I have these certifications. Why not use them? Um, and then uh, that kind of turned into I was training myself from a physical standpoint. Then I started practicing MMA fortuitously at a place called Fortis MMA which is one of the best gyms in the whole entire nation. They just had two guys win on this past UFC card. Um, wow. So that's that's how I got into MMA. And then uh, I was blessed enough to open up my own law firm, which allowed me to do fitness and MMA at the same time. So for me, it was just kind of anytime there's ever been an opportunity, I just kind of chase it, say yes, and then figure it out as I'm going. Yeah. So when you... Um I mean, went on this path and so it, you, you jumped around. So you, st- you were in law school and then you had this opportunity um, to continue. You wanted to be an MMA fighter. So how did that kind of, how did that come into play? And then ultimately you um, became becoming a trainer, a personal trainer with ultimate performance. But you said that it kind of allowed you to go that path because you opened your own law firm. So um, that path of entrepreneurship seemed to kind of open up those other doors. So pursuing all of these different passions, how did they kind of work together? And why did you decide to go after all of these different paths? Yeah, for me, it, it all kind of works synergistically. Um, a lot of the traits carry over like so mixed martial arts and a martial arts lifestyle requires you to develop a certain number of traits those traits lend themselves extremely well into the legal world where you oftentimes have this adversarial environment where you have to kind of rely on very similar traits from a mental standpoint obviously you don't actually have to fight someone physically but you do have to fight for your clients and you have to fight your opposing counsel oftentimes in an adversarial nature and it's not you know I don't like you. I'm fighting you. It's it's. I have to work for these things, and, and and competing against you is how I do that. And then same thing. I feel like the fitness lends itself uh, to that really well because if you're going to compete on a mental standpoint and a physical standpoint, you have to have those skills and those traits that the gym develops. Mm. So for me, er- everything is very synergistic. I feel like there's some continuity uh, across everything that I do, um, and it's why I'm able to do all of those things. Yeah, and it makes a lot of sense too. Going back to um, you know your early gymnastics days, it's that mental discipline that you you learn, and that's instilled within you. All of the stuff that you learn as an athlete can directly correlate to whatever path you choose to go down next. It just having that, um, the like you're saying, it's synergistic. Those things that relate and being able to make those connections, you know, in the real world between what you what you've done your whole life. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, from there, with all of these different incredible paths that you've been pursuing, how did you ultimately end up as a contestant on this season's Titan Games? Um, so what's funny is that uh, back in 2013, I set a Guinness World Record, um, and that came about from American Ninja Warrior casting guys being involved with Guinness World Records. Um, so same thing for this. I was already involved with the Guinness casting producers, American Ninja Warrior casting producers, and they actually reached out to me and said, hey... We've got a new show coming up. We'd like to pre-screen you for it. We think you'd do well as far as maybe being on the show. And then, you know, they kind of buried the lead on me. And then they're like, The Rock. And once they said The Rock, I was like, all right, you can stop. Whatever you need, just tell me. Video <laughs> application, yada, yada. Um, so I, I sent in all the stuff. And I was like, you know, really excited about it, ready to go. And the pre-screening thing was super cool. Um, but, you know, whenever you do this stuff, you got to send in a video. You have to give them your story. You have to kind of show them who you are as a person. So I was just trying to basically do a really good job of of explaining who I am and why I do what I do. Yeah. And I mean, I've heard too, you know, that the, um, the application process was pretty intensive. And so having to sit down and really, um, chronicle through everything that you, you'd done to date, but then, so you, you were alerted to this though, by, um, casting producers by American Ninja Warrior. So were you, what Guinness world record were you pursuing? Um, so I, I, we, I've done two Guinness World Records. Um, I've done uh, most of all backflips between two people in one minute, and that was here in Los Angeles. And then I did another one for 30 seconds, and that was uh, basically close to Shanghai, China. And that experience was absolutely nuts. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. I hadn't, that's <laughs> the idea that you could pursue two world records. And so, um, I mean, comparing those two experiences, what was that like? And what made you decide that that was something you wanted to go after? 
Um, my youngest brother, Zeke, is actually the one who kind of got that opportunity for us. And we had always, we had grown up looking at Guinness, you know, Guinness World Records in the books and just kind of looking through the book all the time. So what happened was uh, when we originally started talking to the casting producers for the Guinness World Records, um, they said, hey, do you guys think you could break a record? And we said, here's, we went through the book and we said, here's 50 records. Pick one. We'll break any one of them. We're happy to do it. Um, <laughs> And they, they came back and said, we have a new world record that we were thinking about doing. Um, and they gave us kind of the parameters and what it was. And they're like, oh, yeah, there's a Swiss ball. You got to do this backflip off of it. And we're like, oh, yeah, we can totally do that. We do it all the time. And that was a complete fib. Um, <laughs> so, so from that point, we had to learn how to do the, the actual record. And then uh, after that, I'm just kind of off to the races. <laughs> That's so cool. And so did you, so your brother got that opportunity, but you were alerted to then the Titan Games too from the, um, the American Ninja Warrior. So was, is that a show that you've also been a part of? I actually have never done American Ninja Warrior, but the American Ninja Warrior casting producers are responsible for me doing against world record and for now being on the Titan Games. So wow. those guys are awesome, but I haven't, I haven't run the American Ninja Warrior course ever. So how did they then become aware of you? I think just from the application process for American Ninja Warrior. Okay, and, okay. And, and gotcha. just the way that the, the scheduling has worked out, and I just haven't been on the show. You know, it's not that they didn't like me or whatever, whatever, but there's always a lot of moving parts to all these shows. Yeah, yeah. And so do that makes a lot of sense. And so, yeah, so you applied for American Ninja Warrior, and then it's that you fit you more, um, I guess, for when this show came up with The Rock, it's that you fit it so perfectly. And so they, they wanted you to go ahead with that process. And so how did then training for these world records and doing um, the personal training, MMA fighter, and then also balancing your life as an attorney, how did this all prepare you for um, the Titan Games? Yeah, you know, what's funny is that in the, in the entire process through the Titan Games, they were telling us, like, train hard, train hard, train hard. And for me, it was basically do exactly what I've already been doing. I always train hard. I'm always on, you know, I have a strength and conditioning program. I have a energy systems program where I'm actually doing some type of conditioning. And then I have an MMA program. And those things are continuous. I'm always training, always ready to go. So when the Titan Games came around, it was more so like I did more mental skills training. Um, I started reading a book by, not reading, or I had already read many books by a guy who's a sports psychologist named Dr. Jim Aframo. And that's kind of where I really delved into like, okay, I know I'm physically kind of at the level where I need to be. It was more so let's work on these mental skills. Let's have kind of a championship mindset in all things that we do. Hmm. That, that's really cool. So, I mean, you know, in that constant state of physical preparedness, so no matter what um, challenge or what new opportunity comes up, you're ready for it. But I think it is easy to overlook or not think about as you're going through that physical training, the mental piece of it. And so intentionally preparing yourself for that side of it, too, um, knowing that you were physically prepared, but how you could be mentally prepared for truly anything that came your way. Yeah, for sure. And, and you know, doubling down onto that gold medal mindset was something that was really, really, really beneficial for me because being my own best advocate and being on my own side was something that I had fought in the past because we all have those those mental demons where it's like, oh, you know, you're not tall enough, you're not fast enough, you're not this, you're not that, whatever the story is or the, that doubt that's going to talk to you in your head, you have to have another voice or a stronger voice inside that says, man, you can do whatever you want. Hmm. Now, I, I, I really like that, that gold medal mindset. So then how, how did that take shape for you? Was there a particular instance at the combine or at the, um, the games in, in particular that kind of brought that out of you and made you realize, wow, this is actually directly applicable to what I've been reading? Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, at, at the combine, it was insane. You know, it's like it almost looks like the CrossFit games, just huge, really good athletes just going nuts on like maximum effort deadlifts or VO2 max or obstacle courses, you name it, or running your 40 and, and, and doing your, your high jump. So, uh, you know, I'm not like I'm five nine, so I'm very average height. You know, I'm, I'm well muscled and I've, and I've competed in everything, but you know, you look around and some of these guys are seven feet tall and you're like, holy shit. And they're, <laughs> they're, they're deadlifting 800 pounds. I mean, I don't know. Some of the deadlifts were absolutely mental. So the, that voice that says like, oh, you're kind of an underdog here is, is, is ever present in 
in a competition like this in games like these so yeah. having having that mindset to be able to say like look i can beat anybody on any day at any time no matter what and you have to rely on that and, and have that in your mind um that really helped me throughout this entire process yeah it it's that that is amazing because it's true. You could get so easily mentally defeated by watching other people deadlift an insane amount of weight or do something that you know is not necessarily in your wheelhouse. But knowing that um, you're there and you have to make the most of that opportunity because you truly never know uh, when or if it's going to come up again. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, don't don't get me wrong. I I think I pulled like four fifty at the combine, which right. is, <laughs> you know, it's not it's not a small weight. So right. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, the thing is, is we always talk about, um, we use the term gump, right? Great under major pressure. Everyone's strong, everyone's fast, but it's that it's that next level mentally that you have to go to to actually perform well and, and, and succeed. Yeah, I like that. Great under major pressure. Yeah, being able to um, rise to the occasion um, and not just not be mentally or or physically defeated, no matter no matter what comes up. And so, um, from this experience on the Titan Games, I wonder just from the combine and actually being a contestant, um, what would you say, Derek, is your definition of a Titan, and how do you believe that this experience that you've had will now help carry over into the rest of your life? Yeah, so for me, I'd say the definition of a Titan and seeing everyone listening to their stories, being part of the process is a person who is willing to go to whatever lengths necessary to, you know, kind of challenge themselves in a physical environment, but also challenge themselves as a person, right? To be the best person that you can and have that that same next level attitude in your physical, in your training, and in who you are as a person and in, in service to, uh, to others. Yeah, I, I really like that. That's key because it's it's challenging yourself mentally, physically, and all of those um, areas. But then how you're going to help other people along the way. So pulling other people along, showing them. And just by living that kind of life, by challenging yourself in all areas, um, how you're inspiring people and leaving that legacy behind for them. Exactly. Um, so, I mean, from this experience now, that so you've, you've done Guinness Book of World Records, um, you're, you've got your own business and personal training, all these things that you've done, um, what's, what's next for you? What are you, are you training for anything in particular or um, do you have another business venture on the horizon? Yeah, so, you know what, I'm, I'm kind of uh, trying to see what's going to come from everything, but I have a lot of stuff in the works right now that I'm really excited about. Yeah. And ho hopefully I'll have another fight announcement very soon. Uh, looking forward to that. Um, and just kind of seeing what, what happens from the whole Titan Games experience. I haven't been on the show yet, but this Thursday is, is when I believe that I'll probably be on there. Okay. So I'm, yeah. I'm really looking forward to kind of seeing uh, what happens after that. Awesome. Yeah, I bet it's going to be I bet it's going to be awesome. And again, you know, utilizing that platform, you already have such incredible platforms um, from the things that you've achieved, but then using this new one in a way that's going to help continue to propel you forward. Exactly. So Derek, I mean, um, with truly this incredible life that you've lived and all that you've achieved to date and looking forward and knowing um, that you still have so much left and you have so many successes ahead of you. I just wonder, what do you want to be remembered for? I mean, honestly, just want to be have my family be proud of me. That's that's kind of my goal at the end of the day, to have my mother and my father kind of say, you know, we're proud of you. Your brothers are proud of you. Your brother in heaven would be proud of you. That's that's kind of my driving force, and and that's what I want people to remember me for. You know, that I worked hard and I lived a life without limits. Thank you all for tuning in to today's installment of the Athletes of the Titan Games podcast. To learn more about each of these Titan athletes, be sure to check out their information in the links in my show notes. Furthermore, to stay up to date on all things coming out of the Keep Moving Forward Creator Studio, be sure to subscribe to the Keep Moving Forward Podcast iTunes channel and follow along on social media, also available in the show notes. As the creator of the Titan Games, Mr. Dwayne The Rock Johnson says, Titans aren't born, they're made. And I hope today's story helped you realize all that you are capable of becoming if you put in that hard work and just keep moving forward.